Riley Bullock <laughs> coming out the backfield. North South runner. Two hands on the ball. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> on the so I made him miss, and then I knew the pass was coming right there. So I'm like. I'm going to kill this guy. Bang. Hi, I'm uh, Riley Bullock, perennial pro bowler and four-time Super Bowl champion. I'd say bollocks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are round the table once again. It is Thursday night and it's the NVL show. And this week, we have from 2017's Hard Knocks, Mr. Joe Dirt, Mr. Riley Bullock, probably the coolest man on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster at that time. Here he is. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, you guys. Thanks for having me. Excited. You're talking about his Tampa. Days. Let's wind it back. Let's personally, go Spartans first. Personally, I feel like we should talk about the family connection to MSU. Correct me at any point if I'm wrong here. If you were born a Buller, you have to go to MSU. There's you, there's your older brother Max, there's your younger brother Byron, there's your younger sister Holly, there's your dad Shane, there's your uncle Chuck, there's your great uncle Bobby, there's your granddad Hank. You weren't Correct. going anywhere else, were you? <laughs> you? got it all right. I'm surprised you got everybody. We all grew up big state fans, obviously went to games. We joke about it, but we really didn't have a choice but to go to Michigan State. You say that, but I've heard there's a sneaky Notre Dame connection in your family. There is. There is Notre Dame. My mom went to Notre Dame. Oh, oh sacrilege. Oh my God. Not oh, under the Buller yeah. roof. They let her out of the shed every Thanksgiving. You went to, I think it was, we went on a visit to Wisconsin and then your brother and I think your friend were like, why are you going to Wisconsin? You know you're going to Michigan. Michigan State, but yeah, that's yeah. Uh, sorry, not Michigan. <laughs> I was taking some visits. I had been to Iowa a couple times in Wisconsin, and I came back from that visit from Wisconsin. It was actually my older brother Max and Marcus Rush, who was a D end at the time at Michigan State. I got back and they were at the house. They're like, "What? What the hell are you doing? Like, why are you going to all these schools?" They're like, you might as well just commit. I'm like, I'm like, you're right. So it was like that next week that I ended up committing to Michigan State. And I can imagine Max must have been like, bro, I was there for the cousins Hail Mary when they won. You can't be going to Wisconsin, man. He didn't even understand why why I was taking visits. <laughs> I don't know why I was either. I think I was just trying to piss people off. I've got a theory that your grandfather invented the three four defense just to potentially give Buller some jobs back in you know in the future. You know, let's make more linebackers and then all yeah, my yeah, sons and grandsons linemen, more linebackers. can have a lot more jobs in the future. That's my legacy. That's what he was doing back in the 60s. He's like, I got to create this new defense because I got some family members on the <laughs> Okay, we got mouths to feed down the line. <laughs> <laughs> so your dad played at MSU with some people that we've actually featured on the NBL show, namely... Mr. Tony Mandarich. One of the biggest oh, bosses of all know. time. And Andre Ryzen, right? Oh yeah, I know Dre. I know Dre well. Can you get him on the show, really? please? Because he just does ignore <laughs> all of our texts and we're like, the man that we want on more than anyone is Andre Ryzen. The crazy thing about Andre Ryzen is, because you know, we, we do vintage, we look at vintage stories, you know, the more niche stories here and there. Andre Ryzen features in every single episode in some way, shape or form, be it on a rap mm -hmm. album, be it his house being burnt down, be it his shoe collection. This man is the most enigmatic man of all time. So does your dad have any crazy stories? I mean, obviously I'm gonna ask about your stories, but like- There's a lot, of, I mean, there's a lot of stories. One thing that not a lot of people know is my dad played his whole college career with a broken back. What? He broke his back following his senior year in high school, weightlifting. So he played all four years with a broken back. And that was the reason why he didn't want to go in the NFL. His back was just wrecked. Because his back was hurting, yeah. And then they were like, yes, because it's broken. So let's talk <laughs> about uh, Riley Buller's MSU career. I'm gonna assume the highlight is winning the Big Ten Championship 2015. Yeah, that whole, that whole season, I would say, 2015 was unreal. Well, he has trouble with the snap, and the ball is free! It's picked up by Michigan State. Jalen wants Jackson, and he scores! On the last play of the game! Unbelievable! And then I read a little something about you nailing uh, some unknown Iowa Hawkeyes tight end called George Kittle, <laughs> someone, someone like that, and then them intercepting off the back of that. Yeah, and yeah, that was a great play. I'm surprised it wasn't targeting because I had two targeting. I also saw that. <laughs> I was looking but. at all your highlights today. The Maryland 
targeting thing. It was three personal fouls in five minutes, and then you were off. You were done. You were excluded from the game I think targeting. I set a record. You were <laughs> dominating that game. It was ridiculous. It was literally like I'll, I'll show you the highlights afterwards. Because I was watching it today, I was like, oh my god. Because I just expected it to be like on this YouTube video is uh, Riley Buller um, ejected for targeting. I was like, okay, this is gonna be a fairly normal, you know, hit to the helmet, off he goes. They put in all the plays beforehand, where he's just he's in the backfield every time. They can't even they can't even touch him. And then the, on the final play, when you do get ejected for targeting, it wasn't deliberate. I mean, because everything's going so quickly, and you you just happen to be up there, right? Well, back then, and kind of how we grew up, you know, like when you're out there, you're trying to hit people as hard as you can. Yeah. And naturally, your head just comes first. So like if you check out some of my high school highlights, it's all just spearing people with, <laughs> with your head. That's how you hit people the hardest. And that Maryland play, when I got ejected, I knew that play was coming. So I was waiting for it. I knew it was happening the whole time. And what they do is they try to send someone out on the left side to kind of block you a little bit, set like a pick. Yeah. So I knew he was coming, here he comes. I made him miss. And then I knew the pass was coming right there. So I'm like, I'm going to kill this guy. Bang. <laughs> and kill him, you did. So, ladies and gentlemen, the throwbacks. Chris Gamble, Julius Jones, Carson the Arson, Palmer. It's the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles. It's Donovan McNabb and the man on the cover of the game, Terrell Owens. What's going to happen? Get your popcorn ready. Find out now. And we're back for the MVL throwbacks. You can cut the anticipation with a knife. Okay, the throwback sitting at 7 and 4. 12th in the power rankings. That's a little bit unfair. Facing off this week against the Philadelphia Eagles, 6 and 4. We've got a tough run in. 6. Wow. We've got a very tough run in. Back at home in the Anaheim Stardome with Northgate and Henderson, Julius Jones in the backfield, and Carson the Arm Pom. Carson with the arson. <laughs> He's setting the game on fire. Carson the arson. Oh, good stuff, Chris Gamble. Chris Gamble. Oh, did, uh, did you hear? We're back in the money as a team. Oh, again, it's every week's a new sponsor. Jean now are out. <laughs> now it's um, Biden Harris are giving us a lot of money to put indoors for Biden on the sky blimp and fly it over California. Suspense. See, Chris Very Gamble. Sure. Stop oh, it! Oh, Brian, Brian Dawkins, Dawkins, whose side are you on? <laughs> Honestly, hard. honestly, whose side is he on? <laughs> this is Brian Westbrook. Oh no. Yes, Lance Yay! Briggs! Yes! That's what I'm talking about. Chicago's Lance Briggs. Look at that as he trots off. I love how they spin their helmets away in disgust. Such a, such a great addition to this game. Wow, intercepted in the end zone. We have 1 minute 34 for Carson the Arsonist to set the Star Dome alight. Carson ends up on his arsonist. <laughs> well, we put a big fat zero on the board. The, the crowd's baying for trickery. <laughs> oh, yeah, it nothing. must be trickery. Look, Brian Mormon, his right foot has woken up. Caught a fair catch. Yes, 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 Gamble! Shut it down! Shut it down! How I wish that that would. And with two seconds left, David Akers will try from 63. Go. This is a very large kick. Drills it, and it's off the crossbar and it. through. Oh, 63 yards from David Akers. Doink there. He just doinked it from 60. That's an unbelievable kick, David Akers. Upright. D'Angelo Hall, that's what happens when you... Where's Trungo? So now they're going to kick another field goal. Field goal, for goodness sake. Oh, for... well, David great. Akers. David Akers' foot burying us in a shallow grave before the half. Right, as we go into the changing room and berate D'Angelo Hall for fumbling our chances away, we'll go back and talk to Riley Buller as I calm down. So here's the thing, though. So obviously you decided to... I mean, guessing play linebacker when you got to college. So you were Kick recruited, returner, freshman recruited, year, I believe. Rec re recruited as a safety, played quarterback, I believe, in high school. And then you were asked in your red shirt career to play tailback. Yep. I mean, come hey. on, mate. I mean, it's Taysom Hill. <laughs> What's Taysom Hill doing here? You guys did your homework. Um, I was in class and Coach D'Antonio called me. I go out in the hallway, leave the class. He's like, hey, can you come into my office? I'm like, yeah, what's it about? He's like, just come to my office as soon as you can. So I'm like, Shit. 
<laughs> and, uh, I wait till the class is over. I go to Coach D's office, and he's like, he's like, what do you think about playing running back? I'm like, you mean fullback? He's like, no, tailback. I like, never played tailback. I played it like one year in my whole life as like a freshman in high school. And he's like, and but bro, we've right got a big now. Le'Veon Bell-shaped hole in our team, yeah. and oh, you're yeah. the man to fill it. <laughs> Riley Bullock coming out the backfield, north-south runner. Two hands on the ball. I don't know what I'm doing for running back. Coming out of MSU and looking to go into the draft, did you think you were going to get drafted? What, what, was, what does draft night look like? It sucked not getting drafted, but I was hurt for most of my senior year. I, I broke my shoulder blade in preseason. I think if I left after my redshirt junior year, I probably, knock on wood, I don't know if I would have gotten drafted or not, but I probably would have had a better chance. Went undrafted and ended up in a great spot in Tampa. And then the television cameras rolled into town and the legend of Joe Dirt was born. That was a crazy time. Yeah, that, that was, was that was where I, I'm a massive Buccaneers fan. And that's why I first saw you. And I was like, just watching the way you played the game, 13 Mike, right? And I guess in practice, you're going against Ryan Fitzpatrick the whole time, which must've been an honor in of itself. Fitz is the man. But like, yeah. just seeing the way that you, one, you take the field, the leadership qualities, the verbiage, like being the quarterback of the defense, like just calling out everything. It was crazy. And not just going, oh, like just putting people in position, calling out what is happening. But I really want to know the experience that you had fighting to get on that team and then in Tennessee and all that sort of stuff. First off, if you're not the fastest, not the strongest guy out there, you got to be smart. Just being a, an undrafted rookie in general on any team is really tough. I mean, it's hard to get looks, it's hard to get reps. And if you mess up once, like they just write you off. Right. But then you add it on the cameras and about the second week of training camp, the cameras were on me 24 seven. Yeah. I was mic'd up every day. I was doing interviews in our downtime. And what I didn't like about it, overall, I think it was a good experience. But what I didn't like about it is, I feel like I hadn't proved anything yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm in a locker room next to Gerald McCoy and these guys, like they're my locker buddies right yeah. there. But when they let the media in, all of them are coming to me. And like, like I have 10, 15 people around me interviewing me and I'm like, I'm just an undrafted rookie. Like go talk to Gerald or Levante or, yeah. or one of these guys. So that that was frustrating. Because you'd had a great preseason. There was, the, there was this, the play against the Bengals where you stuffed someone on their own goal line. But then against, I think it was the Browns, it was just two plays back to back. And there's not a lot in it. There's a fingertip here and there. And it's it's not like you blew a coverage. It's not like you got left for dead. It's not like you got put on your ass like um, Brian Bosworth. Uh, there was a couple, one of those plays I think you're talking about, it was a cover two. So as the mic, I had the deep, deep middle and I had the guy covered and it was at the end of the game and the pass was literally perfect. And I just missed it. And they ended up getting like a huge gain. Uh, I think they ended up winning that game, but that's the thing. It just comes down to inches that's literally and then that's inches. where you see uh coach smith on hard knocks in the booth like that saying that's why you can't play here blah 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 you, you got waved by the buccaneers and then brought back uh on the practice squad and then get, got given an injury settle, settlement and waved but then brought back to the active roster for nine games and then waved again what is what, what does that do sort of mentally like what that must be impossible. That's part of the NFL. And a lot, I would tell people this all the time. Like they see the guys with the big contracts and all this and like they're, they're starters. So they're good to go. But the majority of the roster is guys like me that are fighting for a job every week and are getting cut, having to move, having to move back. That's the majority of the NFL. You just don't see those guys as much. It's interesting that you said, you know, that's the majority of the NFL and that is something that I said to Chris earlier. I was like, that's why I'm really keen to interview Riley because it's those stories that if you unpack them, we can relate to as people who don't play the NFL, but we do our own things. Like, you know, I'm an actor, Chris is a comedian. And these are all these things where like, we, we feel like we've been not born to do them, but like, this is what I want to do with my life. You know, I feel like I'm better than anyone else at this one thing. And so it's quite a thorny one, I don't, feel like you have to answer if you don't want to. What was the moment like when you, you sort of went, this isn't gonna happen? Um, so my, when I was with Tennessee, the first preseason game, uh, I got hurt against the Eagles and it was pretty bad injury. I, I tore every ligament in my elbow. 
I had a couple choices. I was like, all right, well, I can do surgery and that's going to be a pretty major surgery and I'll be in a huge brace for six, eight months, whatever it is, and then I can try to come back. I did have a chance. Teams, I probably would have gotten signed somewhere, practice squad, something, given a chance in the off season. And I'm, I'm kind of fortunate, I think, that I had that mindset because there's a lot of guys that are in my shoes and try to keep playing for two, three years after they're not, they haven't been signed. And then they're now they're 28, 29 years old. They've never had a job and they're kind of starting from zero. So I didn't, I never wanted that to be me. I, I knew, you know, it was kind of time to be done for me and, and to move on. And I'm getting word, yes, we are ready to go back down to pitch side with Pam Oliver at the Stardome in Anaheim for the throwbacks versus the Eagles. The throwbacks looking to come back and take the advantage away from the Indianapolis Colts who lost in this fictional world this week. Chris, if you would do the honours. <laughs> come on, throwbacks. We've had two interceptions and caught. no points to show for it. Oh, oh that's got to be a pick. Crumble! <laughs> that was just my hopes deflating. Yes, Sean Taylor! Perfect timing! Rookie Sean Taylor shows up in his weird frosty visor, which means he can't see anything. Come on! The field goal is not good enough. That is the that is written above the locker room door. That's what they tap on the way out of yeah. the locker room every day. The field goal is not good enough. Okay. Andre Johnson to the corner. Oh, someone block him. Give me out of field goal range in a second. Right, we'll have a field goal then. But no, I'm, we're having a field goal. Neil Rack, if Neil Rackers can't kick it from here, from 54, then he's getting cut. Oh, boom. Oh, Neil! Neil. Wouldn't have even made it if it had been in the right place. A useless kicker. Shut up, Neil. What's the point? It wasn't the centre's no fault. It was no one. It was you, Neil. It's the long snapper's fault. Right, well, this is disgraceful. The home fans are getting angry. Not, I mean, we can't rely on the kicker anymore. We're going to have to keep going for it. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, someone tackle someone. Come on. Well, we're getting run over by the Eagles here. But they just get caught up in the middle like a traffic jam. He's a professional. And they just give up. Oh, Brian like a flopping like a toad. Okay, right. Well, David Akers isn't going to miss this, is he? The boot of truth. Bang. That's going to the next state. And it's 20 nil to the Philadelphia Eagles. The home fans are leaving in their droves from the Stardome. Start the comeback. He's wide open. Yes, Dennis North cuts. Well done. Finally, some yards from the ostrich beating wide receiver. That's why we drafted him. Dennis North cut again. Yes, Dennis yes. North cut. You've finally woken up. <laughs> and now we go into the fourth. We're what? Three scores down? Don't learn. Don't learn. It's Bruce Willis. <laughs> All right, four minutes for the comeback of the decade. Stop and go. Carson! 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 Like a boat! To the corner! Ugh. Yes, good. Step out. We'll take that. Carson Palmer running like a man with bionic legs. Okay, what are we saying? I'm not having Carson roll out. His legs are tired now. Get in. Yes! yes. Bang! Yes. Oh, you're fine from 10 yards out, Neil. Neil. Welcome to the jungle. That Cincinnati sign is still there. <laughs> Do we clean the stadium? Okay, third down. This is good. It's three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. We need to stop. We need to stop right now. Right now. Yes. yes. The Colts just lost, which gives us a narrow window, and the window is right now. We need to step up and take it. Ooh. Okay, third and 15. This is a big old play. This, this could be the game. Brian Dawkins has stepped up. He's on the blitz. Oh, flag! Flag, flag, flag! That is pass interference. Pull it out. Yes, yes. thank you. Well, North Coast not done much. That's what I'm talking soon. about. Let's well, go, let's to go. The game, to the line, to the line, to the line. Exact same thing. Oh, oh God! It's got to be a touchdown here. This has to go into the end zone. Opportunity slipping away like the crowd. Oh, get in! Go on, Dennis North! Oh, Dennis North! Oh, oh, God, take a time out. Get in! No, oh, Carson, no. no! Oh, it was right there! Okay, quarterback draw. Come on, Carson. Have to, you have to get in now. Come on. Go, 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 go! Thank you. Yes. He flops into the end zone. Oh, dear. That's cost us precious seconds. 45 seconds to go. Every single game comes down to an onside kick. The kneel. The kneel. We haven't got any timeouts. Slow death. They won the game. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is... We had a window of opportunity to seize the division lead and we have Neil Rackers it wide right as the Philadelphia Eagles run up on the throwbacks as the clock ticks down. That's a win for the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Stardome empties out as we go back to Riley Buller. And from that really sad place, yeah. we go into the game. Yeah, it's the game. <laughs> so the very important question, do you know the English phrase if something's bollocks. No, I never heard it. Okay, bollocks. Really? Okay. Bollocks means rubbish. It means it's not true. It's fake, spurious. So that's what rubbish, is that what rubbish means? It's okay, fake. so probably should have explained rubbish as well. Rubbish means trash. It means trash. So if you said to me, hi, I'm uh, Riley Bullock, perennial pro bowler and four-time Super Bowl champion, I'd say bollocks. bollocks. <laughs> true or false base question, entirely about MSU, right? We figure that you- It's your you, specialist subject. You can phone a friend if one of your brothers or father is there. Spartans Nation looks to you, number 30, Riley Buller, coming down the middle. All right, let's go. And the name of the game today is MSU's Riley Bullocks. Is it true or really bollocks? There we go, fantastic, crowbarring that pun. Here we go. Game time. Question number one. East Lansing's most famous bar is called Softies. That's bollocks. <laughs> yes. That was sort of like a mix between your name and bollocks, but I love it. Yeah, it's bollocks. Exactly. And, bollocks. What, and what is it? What is like, East Lansing's most famous bar? Uh, Rick's. Oh, well, I was going to go for Crunchies is what I heard. Most famous bar is probably Rick's. Um, okay, right. So you got that one. One zip. Right. Question number two. The Spartans' most famous basketball player is Draymond Green. That's bollocks. <laughs> yes. yes! Who is? I would probably say Mateen Cleaves. There is definitely an argument for Mateen Cleaves. Most people would go with Magic Johnson, but each to their own. <laughs> oh, Magic. Yeah. No, 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 Mateen Cleaves. Mateen Cleaves. We'll take Mateen Cleaves. I was Cleaves. thinking like more recent, but yeah, Magic for sure. Right, so Sparty, the Spartans' mascot, has been the mascot since... 1955. True. That is correct. That is correct. Absolutely ruining this game like a Maryland running back. <laughs> okay, two questions to go. Historically, football is not MSU's best sport. True. And can you tell me for extra points, what is MSU's best sport historically? Basketball, probably? It was cross country running. <laughs> Yeah, really? MSU dominated in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Oh, well, for God's sake, yeah, during the war. <laughs> <laughs> and last, but definitely not least, the Spartans were once called the Aggies. True. Oh, oh mate, he's easy. nailing it. Easy. Don't need to phone a friend. <laughs> Chill it. Don't just stand down at work. It's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, when it was the Michigan Agricultural College, they were the Aggies. I was just going to say, MAC. Yeah, exactly. They changed their name eight times to school before they settled on Michigan State. Okay, and on that bombshell, um, Riley Buller destroying the game. Absolutely trucking the game and getting sent off for targeting. Riley Buller, the man, the legend. Is there, like, at the Spartan Stadium, like, a wall, the Buller Wall, or the Buller Memorial Wing? There's a few things. My my grandma and grandpa, they have the study lounge is named after them. Right. What? And then we got our name on the on the stadium, obviously, for two Big Ten championships. So <laughs> They funny. named the study lounge after uh, yeah. a family of linebackers. Ironically, no Buller ever went to the Buller study lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Riley Buller. Thank you so much for joining us, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, guys. And thanks fun. for talking so candidly about, you know, the Tennessee Titans stuff and the end of the career stuff. That was really awesome. And if anyone, for some reason, is looking to buy a house in Denver, Colorado, I've got a real estate agent for you. And he will flatten, literally flatten the competition. <laughs>േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ േ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ െ